and I'll come back home. For today's video, we go make this QR generator. If they take in the text here, if you set the size for this QR generator, if you even change the background on waiting your QR generator be, you go write text or you go write anything when you want inside them. And then people go fit scan them with their phones. And that's what we go do for you. So make I just create some text. So I could just say, so I fit set the size and I fit change the background color. Make make them red. Now, if I click here, it will generate a new QR code for me. And of course, I fit scan this code for my phone. I you just say the text where I write before, then they show. So the idea of say, if you do anything where you want with this QR code, if you write any text where you want for here, make up any size where you want, and it will help you generate the QR code for here. So this is now a very interesting project to work on and make we uh, start today work on this project. Before we start, if you don't notice, my voice, they sound somehow low. So today, I know today feel fine, but I just make I come out, make I push myself, make I make this video for somebody out there who on a feast day you know, build something interesting to the ad for your portfolio and to the learn how to decode together. We could start today, add some very interesting technologies. We could set up, we're going to set up Node. We're going to set up uh, a package manager, like uh, another package manager. We're not going to use NPM here. We're going to use PNPM. And then we go talk with an API to the generate our uh, QR code for here. And then also we're going to use a bundler so that we go feed the, follow the best practices where we work with API. Let me first set up our uh, Node.js. So you're gonna to need to install Node.js for here. Me, I already download my Node.js, and this is not the latest version as of today, but uh, 2022 November. Waiting the here, be say you're gonna need to download at least the long-term support. That now waiting LTS means you're gonna to need to download the uh, LTS version of Node.js. No worry, we're not going to the right any uh, much Node.js code, but you need Node.js. Every developer, back end, front end, every developer need Node.js. So download the latest version of Node.js. Then at this one, no, be this one when you need, but this one, okay? As we don't set up Node for our machine and we don't install them, make we check whether we get Node installed. So I could just say Node dash V to check the version of Node where they use. And uh, you just say I they use uh, Node 16, but no worry, Node 18 will still work for your machine. The next way you need to do now say you want to install PNPM. So I could just do NPM install, or if you use I, then I could say dash G to install them globally. And I could just say I want to install PNPM. Now this PNPM, if I run this command, it will help me install the uh, latest version of PNPM for my machine globally, for my whole laptop. It will help me install them globally for me. But me, I already get PNPM installed. And to find out, we could just say we want to do PNPM dash V. So if you run that first command, you will not install up. And if you run this PNPM dash V, it will show you the version of PNPM where you get for inside your machine. Now, I did inside my desktop directory where you see for here. And for inside this desktop directory, what I want to be say, I want to create my files where I want. You're right. So I want to create my project. So I'm going to say PNPM. And if I don't do this PNPM, I'll go say I want to create, but I want to create a bit project. Now, once I do it like this, PNPM will ask me some series of questions. It could, like, for example, it will say, okay, you want to create a project? What kind of project you want to create? And then I hear for inside this button bar here. Now here we want to add what you want to create for inside our project. So I'll come say, I want to create a QR, like I said, dash code, dash gen, all right? So if I click on, you'll see say, now they ask me how I want to build this project. If I want that with React, view or vanilla JavaScript. So now what you want to do with vanilla JavaScript. And I know there is TypeScript today, so we could just use just vanilla JavaScript with no TypeScript. And then you can see say, Vid don't give us, don't help us create this directory. You don't even help us, don't make all these files. And you don't give us some commands. We say, if you run these commands and it will work for us, nice, nice. So we change directory into this QR uh, code gen directory. And once we do inside here, this is now our project where we work with. So make we LSM, make we see waiting VS code, don't, um, waiting Vit don't help us generate for here. Can make a bigger. I just say bit don't help us make a make a big. They say bit don't help us make these um, files for here. And this is not just a startup project where bit don't help us generate quick, quick with some code inside out. So we need to run some commands to make sure say it will work. And then are these commands for here. So it says make we run this command. So we we'll go first run pmpmi or install. 
and this will help us install all the dependencies where we need all the code when we need to just say pmpm just they ask me say make an update so make can i ignore this one i pre-run this command again and i go upgrade my pmpm version to the latest which for today which now 16 so ignore that one and pmpm don't help me arrange everything if don't do them fast fast uh for me sorry and uh as the project don't set up here make we say now as we don't install them um, one more run pmpm run dev so if i run this command like this waiting vids don't help me to say it can't help me arrange this server or local server where if you run so make we just minimize this one make we open up our browser and then make we just click this link so i'm gonna just press control and click this link it will help me set up this project so that now waiting vids they help us they do for here with this counter and all those things for here all right so make we close this code and make we clean up our project so that we will go start from scratch so i'm gonna say I want to do code and i feel even close this terminal since we did inside our vs code and i could just press command uh control or command if it is mac and i could just press the tilde or backticks for my keyboard now if you look inside this project directory you can see say this don't help us arrange all the files we need and we feel they write our code anyhow we want so make we command the codes where we don't need all right so make we just clean up this code command the counter Clean up all the HTML. And then the main, I go clean up all the main. And then I go clean up all the CSS and save all of them. So now if I run my code and I say PNPM, run dev, it go run in my browser and it will give me any problem at all. So if I say make I open up my browser for here, you go see say I get this blank screen for here. All right, so we could go back our uh, VS Code and I could just copy paste the code with the here uh, for the bootstrap and the HTML. And once I paste them, I could just explain what's in the happen for here because now suppose don't be familiar with all this code with the here. So already we get our head tag we will work with for inside here and our head we just they add our bootstrap CSS for here and for inside here we they add for this remaining code for here we they add our font awesome. So that we could change the font family we will work with and of course if you check here in our title we will work with and what i do for here i just style the body with just this one line of code so that i go feel it change the font family we will work with where google don't give us for free for here and every other thing for here could be inside the body okay now for inside this body what we do we say i get the container we bootstrap they give us and this container i wrap all our code inside this container now our script tags where we they use the import our proper js and we they also use script tags for here they import our bootstrap and of course we just we they arrange our main js we just link our main js file and this one for here we they link up as a module so if you look inside the container and if you look into the form you can see, say, uh, we get this text area where we get all these bootstrap classes. But what you need to take note now the ID of each of these elements. Okay, so if you notice, I use IDs a lot for here. Then I to show, say, each so that we feel the target each element anyhow where we want at any time where we want. I also said the mean and the max for this input. This now the mean and the max for the size of the elements we want. And then for here, I can set the colors, the color for the QR code generator or the QR code when we want, we go fit the set the colors for here. So if you look, I set the ID again with some bootstrap classes where they here, and we just set the type to color, and then we just set the default values to white, you know, understand. And then we said did the same thing for here, but this time we changed the default value for the dots and we just change them just the way we want to change them. Finally, for here, inside this form, I can't arrange this button. We go day large, but we could just set the type to submit so that anytime we click this button, it go trigger a submit event for here. So make we close this one, make we close the CSS, and make we leave the JavaScript open. Make we go set up our uh, API where we're gonna work with, make we try get our API key. So we'll go fit connect to our. So for inside my browser, make we go this site, happy.dev. If you come to this site, you're going to need to create an account. Me, I already log in my account. But if you just come in here as a new person, you're going to need to put in your email and fill out the form and just follow the normal steps, register for the site, and then go fit come back this panel with it here. Pause the video, go do one, and then when you've done that finish, come back the video, come continue to the watch. Okay. And if you come to this panel, for inside this panel for here, you'll see this API key. 
this number where they here. This is your API key. It just be like key where they help you open your door. It just be like password. So no go share this key with anybody. Who, in fact, this key where they see here said, now just for this video alone. After this video, I go throw away this key. So maybe not even worry yourself with this key safe. But when you make your own account, you go feel create your own key with them. All right. So now, if I say make I copy this key, I could just save them for inside my VS code. Make we save them for inside here. And then make we comment this code out. As we get this key for here, because this API, they give us some kind things. We don't go do all these things for here. We don't go pay anything for here. In fact, we're going to use the free account. We could just come here to this API. Then we could come here to this QR code. When you click on this, uh, will give us the endpoints when we need. We're going to hit this endpoint. We're going to help us to generate this QR code when we want. If you also test them for here, if you say anything when you want, and then you could just test them for here by hitting the code, this call button, and it will give us the JSON response for them. So now we don't get this API key, right? When we copy for here, make we say we want Adam the right way for inside our code. Remember, say I tell you and say they don't really share this code with anybody. So how you want to push this kind of code online, and how you want to share with people? I'm going to say hackers, no features, or anybody, no just take your API key, do anything where they want to do with your API key. Simple. You're going to need to create a .env file. So make we create a .env file. So you come here for inside your VS Code. I'm going to create a new file in the root directory. We'll come, come here. We'll come say we define the dot env. What you want to be say because now vit we go get the way vit they allow us they make the env or the environment variables we want. Now say we want name them vit. So I could just press cap for here. I will go put that all in blocks or in cap letter. We'll say vit underscore, and then we we'll just say it equals to, and then we we'll just paste that API key where we get from here. That API key we get from Happy Dev. We we'll just paste down there. So now when we save that API key for there, if we close this file, this .env, just make sure say it did inside the root directory, all right? Make we try console log that value of this .env. One use the vit way to console log out. So we'll say console. Now make we log out that value. We'll consider the value we want because now vit we didn't use, we'll say import. And one do the .meta and one say .env. So vit, they expose our environment variable with this okay so once we done like this and then if you write the name of what we define so if i say i want to go to the env okay and i copy the code for here and i just the name and we say we won't go the vit uh happy api key what you want to be say we want to check say oh this console or this code if they log this code out for the console so we could go back into our browser we could check so we'll just go back into our project instead and then we can open up our dev tool. So press F12. And if you check out, it will still say this is now our key where we will work with for here. Nice, nice, and nothing on spoil. All right. So now when we get this API key active and every other thing here, they active. Waiting again, we're going to need to do if you use this code anytime you want. So make I just comment this out and then we can command this API key. And then what we want to do is say, we want to just say const. We want to collect all the elements we get those IDs. So we'll say QR form. I want to assign them to documents dot and this query selector we want now anything will be in form for here. So remember to put them inside a string and then this form make we just duplicate them a bit and then we'll just change the values. Okay. So the first value we want to change for here now the QR form, but one change I'm say we want to change the user data. So we'll say user data dot f data and then we'll change the value for here. So we check the our HTML. You can see say each element it gets in own id so this first id will be find now this id so first thing i would like to say i would like to push up on my html to the side i just say we feel they see every uh, code will be working so because today we did a bit lazy we will just click this one and paste that code in here so now we're going to get all the elements for the screen what you would like to do say we go like we will say we go set up the qr and after we don't set up the QR code, let me say we want we will be say we feel even trigger the submission. So we we'll say trigger the submission, and then make we um, also say we want another function. We go we we'll say fetch. We go come fetch that data from there. So we we'll come here. I go like say make we create a function, and this function make we call this function set up QR code. And this function, we want to make it take in a parameter. So we'll say we want a 
dot prevent default. Once we do it like this, this will prevent our form from acting normal whenever we hit submit button for here. So we could just console log something, say it did work. So remember, say we did work with this form input for here. So we could just say we want the QR form, sorry, QR form, and we want to attach an event listener to this QR form. So the event listener will be defined, now the add event listener, but we define the submit event listener. So we'll say for inside string, we want to submit so that whenever the form don't they submit, we want to do something. And what we want to do is say, we want to call the function. So we'll say event, and the element we'll be able to work with. But what can pass that element something, all right? Or the event object, we want to pass them something. So we'll say we want the setup QR code for here. And then inside here, make we pass that E or that event object inside there. Now once we pass it like this and we press save, and I can close this one. It's supposed to help us to arrange this code where we say we're going to pass this event handler and this event object we to pass up into here now once we pass this event into here we want prevent them make the form no behave like normal form and then make it just console log say it didn't work and everything here they all right so we can check back inside our code and of course make we open up our dev tool so f12 and if we say make we uh click something for here make we click submit you're supposed to check our dev tool you just say it they tell us say it's working now make i quickly bring this down okay cool so if i click here you can see say it tell us working working everything here you know get wahala now what you want to do is say we need a way we want to check when we say this form it gets something inside here we don't want just same form when we say we go send that to a broken link or something so what you go do we go like just come inside here just underneath the prevent, we go like just let's say make we. So if the form gets data, at that time we want to do something. So we say if if this user data dot value dot length, if it day equals to zero, then you say if the thing don't get any value inside, if you don't get any value at all, oh, at that time we want to do something. So what do you want to do? Well, we go like alert this now JavaScript method and. What we want to do before inside this method, we say we want to say once we do it like this, if we check our browser now and we click here, you can see say we will get this error. Why be that? Hmm, that's not simple. So make we come inside here and make we see waiting they happen. Oh, I did see the error. So now value, I don't know why my um PS could do that, but now value will be defined. So make we come back here and make we submit. And this is say we get this alert message for here where they tell us please enter some text and if you click on and you try submit again it will tell us to submit it until we enter some text for here and we click submit then it works and we click submit and it keeps working anyhow where we want okay so that are just safety check to the make sure say we always get that valid data so otherwise once you do that make it down like they say make it return so once you do, make it off, make it off the code, make it just return, make it not even do this working self when you see, because like that, the code not the work. So make you say, if you do like this now, you press OK, you're not going to tell us working, you could just return the code immediately. Otherwise, if you don't put that return for there, it will continue to run the code even after warning us. OK, so the return that will break out of this uh, function when we don't want again. All right. We go say for inside this our get QR code function. We go like make with a. Once we fit do that, we go also like we will say we go fit call that code. And uh, for inside here now here we go fit call every data we will find. Make we say we want fetch the API or we want connect the API to our application. And what we want to say once we will say if we create an asynchronous function. So we want the function to say now I sync. And this asynchronous function, we could call them the fetch. Now this fetch QR code, you're going to take in something, you're going to take in some sort of like object, okay? And make I make a here or BJ. So because you are going to take in that object, we go feel they do anything when we want with that object. But first, before we do anything with that object, what you want to say, we want to first try. Sorry, try. We want to create a try catch. That means say we want to try something and otherwise we want to catch something. Okay. So the code we want to try now, we want to use this asynchronous way to fetch data from the internet. So make we come into our documentation for happy.dev. And if you look here, 
you go fit see all these parameters with right here. So here now the API key, right? And here now the text or data we want to work with. So this text now could be any text we want for here. All right, this is not the text we will convert into a picture. If you set the width, if you set the background, if you set the dots and all those kinds of things. So we we'll just click call for here and go see say it don't give us this data with it here. So we we'll go use fetch to get this data or to fetch this data. So I will just copy this code and then we we'll come inside here. So we we'll say we can do the fetch. All right, and we we'll fetch our data. But the data we want, remember, say I don't tell you that say the first parameter by default now the get request. So no need to they put the method as get and all that. But the other video I don't show now. So we we'll just come here. I could just press your back ticks because for inside this back ticks, we want to put some JavaScript into our string. All right. So normally we suppose just get the string. So now that the string will be copied from the other side, now paste here. So if you make this request like this now, it's supposed to give us exactly what we ask for for the previous side. So first we we'll clean up and then make we add our API key for here. So we say dollar sign and call it brackets. Then for inside here, now here we we'll copy copy this API key. And then we'll just paste them inside here. So once I save that, our API key suppose work the same with this data with the inside here. So remember, this is now asynchronous code. So what we want to be say, we want to start today assign up something, right? We want we want way we say if we do something, make the code help us check another thing, like make the code they wait once the code finish, make the code do another code. So for instance, try catch block. What we're going to be saying, we want to create a constant. So we'll just assign this variable because we're asynchronous. We'll assign this variable to a response. And this response, we could just assign them to the await using the await keyword. Sorry, not wait, but await keyword. So what do they do? We say we they wait to, for this function, make it run finish. So as this function don't run finish, then it will give the value to this response we'll work with. All right. And then we can say we want to return something. So because now asynchronous function we'll work with, make we say we want to return. And what we want to return, we want to return the function where it's supposed to be the response because we they wait for them. But we want to return the response dot JSON. So every time when we call this function, it's going to help us, it's going to call, but it's going to return this JSON. So that we feel they work with that function anytime where we want. Okay. That's not why we they use this function for here. So, all right. So make we just console log that error, make we handle that error. Now, once I press save for here, you can see, say we get this uh, asynchronous function where they help us they fetch the code and go to wait for us. If something come, it will help us know say, oh, something don't come or make I do or make I no do. Now, what you want to do for here, we say we want to wait, we say we feel they bring this our JavaScript object a data. Make we clean this text and then we go just say we want the dollar sign, call it braces, and then for inside this call it braces, make we say we define object dot. And then whatever parameter we define. So for now, we could just call this object dot data. So now this object dot data, even though we never assign them to anything, now what we want to put for here. Okay. So make we go back down into our function for here. We'll be work with. All right. So instead of working, we can clear that working. So we can call this function say fetch QR code. Remember, say we expect like an object. If you check for here, remember say we expect like an object. So the object we defined. Now, let me call out data object. So this our data object will help us the the work with that object we work with. And because our object, we go use our curly brace to create this um, object for here. And then we will just set every value where we defined. So for now, we could just set the data. And this data, we want to set them to user data dot value. So whatever value. Where we get for here, and I want to use as this value of data for here inside this data object. Okay, so make we just pass on our data object for here. So just making sure, say any value we pass for here, it could enter into this. So this is the promise we want to attach the dot then method to run, and this dot then method make we say fetched data. Okay, and whatever fetch data we will get, make we just say one console log that data. So we just say and call this fetched with the ed sorry so we we'll say fetch data all right so any data where we don't fetch we we'll go come put them inside here then i'm going to do with this function so we can press save we could test this our code out so we we'll just come here hello again all right and uh make we uh make we i just press save for here or make a qr code i click up you see say we get the successful 
uh, request for here. All right. So now we did log out this object. All right. So now this object we did here now. If we check what's in the inside now, you can see say you get this QR code uh, key or what they here. And this QR code key or property where they here, you see say they give us this string, this long string for here. Now that the code we will use to add the image to our code. So I could go back into our code and see say now where we don't they get this data from the API. Make we see what's in the game we would like to. So like we're gonna need some way where we say. We go feed the display this data, right? So already we they we they work with this data, we they format the data well, but make we say we want to display the data in a very I want to talk in a very nice way. So we could just come here and then we could just say we want to create this data and want to display the data or the QR code for our own code. So we could just create a function inside this our setup QR function. So we'll just create a new function and then we could just call this function display. This function, what it's supposed to be say, it's supposed to help us display the QR code where we work with. Okay. Then now what you want to be say, we want to just pass some the data or any data where we pass into RAM that now uh, the object where we expect. We want just if I come here, so I'm console log, we want just display the data. So we'll say display QR code data. All right. And then we pass in this fetch data. So whatever fetch data now we pass here, then we'll enter into this function where they hear so so what i would like to say i would like create an element so i will say let's uh make a column qr wrapper we want to use javascript to create something so to create an element to javascript we just say document dot create element and this create element now here we go to create anything we want but to create them we're going to need to add a string and then go to create any of these elements where we want so the element we will define we just define a simple div Sorry, I keep calling it QR. Okay, say QR wrapper. Okay, so every time we call this QR wrapper, we want to add a class or we want to add some classes to RAM. Okay, so to add that class, we will say class list. We suppose assign them to a string, and this classes list we will just they come from Bootstrap. So we will say, and then make we just write a last class. We go to let us know say this is not the element where they work with. So we will just say results all right now this is now our own custom class where we're going to work with so okay now once we don't they write that class for there what you want to be say we want just attach this element or attach the image we're going to work with so we'll just say we define the qr wrapper dot inner html this html we want to add make we say we want to add them inside backticks and the element will be defined now an image so it's our html tags img and I close that and this image make we add our source so we we'll say src we we'll go say we want to assign them to something right so what do we assign them to well we want to assign them to any data when we pass in here and we'll assign them to the dot the data qr code then at the qr code remember saying we've been getting one response and that response it will give us the qr code for inside our json object so we could just say this QR code we will get if we try sending like this, it not go work. Why? Because with the backticks, we go like inject our JavaScript code into the string where they here. So we could do that. So we we'll say the last sign, curly braces, and go we'll paste that inside there. And then we could add some additional classes because now Bootstrap they work with. We're gonna need some way where we say we want to show the element for the screen or we want to append them to the screen. So where we want to put this element for our screen, we we'll go like append them to the form. Remember the form? Then add this element for here or this one for here for the very top. We want to append them to this form. Let me say this new element where we they make one do append. So we're gonna say qr form dot append. Sorry. And this append, what do you want to append? Well, we want to append the simple element of qr qr wrapper. So this element where they here, we want to append them to the form. Make we test say our form they work as we expect. Okay. If we click here. We will see say we get this error or this alert. Then they tell us make we enter some text. Make we enter some text. Make we try. Click on. Oh, they see our QR code don't they show for here now like this for us. And of course, if I scan now, it go show for us. But what if we? Why did it not they show the background color and all those other things? Why not they do like that for us? And if you click on, why you know they change? So make we say this text for here. It they show us this text, and if we add more text, you know they clear. So the text shows one, and if we press make QR code, it they help us make two QR codes. It they help us they make two QR code, which they different. If you look at where we go, see say they different. But the problem where they be say 
Even though you did different, it they write, it they create on top of itself. So if I say uh, make I create another one, and I say make I make another one, and I say make I make another one, if you go to change, you go to add more and more and more and more and more. And we don't want that. Once we say if we make this one and we put, it go to clean the text or it go to clean these things. So make we first do. How we go first take clean this text? Well, thank God say JavaScript. They help us, it is very interesting to the work with. So to the clean this text, make we come back our code, make we clean this text when we get. Now, the text we want clean, we say anytime when we don't create or we don't display this our element or our text when we get for here, anytime when we don't create create them, create, um, we want to reset the um the values of the user data. So we we'll say user data. Remember, we're saying the user data be than the form input or the text area, and we want that user data dot value. I'm going to set the value to an empty string. That means say the value, you know, go get anything again. So if you come here and we say we want to create our code, aha, because you say now you don't clean the text. So if you put more text here, you know, if you get the same thing again, and if you put them, it will clean our code and it will add the other one. So if we add more text again and we set this again to make, it going to make, it going to create new, new QR codes for us, but it going to clean the text. So we don't fix that small, tiny issue. So we could just go back our code and then we could just add a comment down there to show, say, oh, now wait till we do with it. Display the code. We won't show that code, but whenever the, the new QR code show, then we go clean whatever value we will get from here. Now, whatever value we did here, we're going to clean up. We're going to clean up. We're going to clean up. Okay. Now, again, another thing we would like to, and down that way, let me say, we would like also check if something they did dumb. If you did, make it come on the thing. Otherwise, make it leave the thing. All right? Because if you look here, you go see, say, these are our images. If they show on top one or another, I know we're waiting we want. We want to remove this image or delete them. And then when you show again, when we press this button again, we won't put another button. So when I put another text for here and I click on, we won't come on this first one and put another one on top. You know, make it a stack, make it a show on top of each other. No waiting we want to be that. Okay. And then make we say for inside our uh, display. So for inside here, we could just write a simple if statement. Okay. And this if statement, we'll just say, I want to keep the document, the query selector. But what do we say? One check if the class of results, okay? And one check down here, this results where they here. One check if this class they available. So we'll say results with the S. If results with the S, they results they available. Then we want to run our code or we want to do something. So make, what do you want to say? We want to just say this result with the S. We want to convert them because this result with the S. Now this our div element, all right? Now because we figure many many this for our element, then I want to just use this result with the S. If you use ID or anything, but I just want to make it day here inside this our display function. Then I will be done for here. So. All right, so we're not saying for here, we want to do if there is a result element on the DOM, then we want to do this result element, we want to convert them. So we we'll say dot remove. And once we do that, dot remove for here, it will convert that element for us. All right, so if you press save, we could go back into our browser, we could check. And I say hello, and we click on it, will give us our QR code, and it don't clear our text. So we can say world, and I click on. Because they say it don't clean the code and it don't change the code. So if we say we want another one, and we click on again, it goes to say it they different and it not they add on top of each other. All right. So that's how we they clean the code, they remove the code, they add a new QR code, and so on and so forth. But already, even if we change this our image or this our image size, if we reduce our and let me know for here and 128. And if I set that to 128 for here and I press uh, make. It goes to say, oh, we never add any text, so we just say make. Uh, and if I click here, it goes to say the size, you know, they change. Now we could go back into our VS Code. So remember, say we did work with this formatted data, we did work with this data object, right? So now this data object, we could call Adam, say, okay, well, as an object, we won't get the size. So I could just say size. And this will be anything, if you call it size cow, it no matter. And then you could just say you want the user, whatever input the user inputs for the user size with now the ID where we work with, right? Where we use target that element, we won't get the value. Remember, I say this object, we they pass this object into this for um this fetch QR code and make we go into the fetch QR code. And this fetch QR code did they receive an object, right? And we they call this object or data, and now one call object or size. So make we go into where we fit add the width and you look for here. 
because it's say the width now and the size we fit column width if you call them size no matter and then we could just say we want the dollar sign call it brace and then we could just say we want the object and at the obj dot size for using TypeScript, if I don't get some more autocomplete nice stuff with the app for here. So, but for now, we just use JavaScript. And if you check here, I'm saying we could save this code. We could try and run up in our browser. We could see what we do for here. Uh, we want another one. Hello. Yeah. We could change the size. Sorry. I forget to change the size. We could say 128 or 180. And then we could just change the size. Ah, you see, say now we don't get our QR code as a small image for here. Okay. But we never need to change the color. So if we say make you change this color to red or something and we generate a new one, you know, new text, we click on it, they help us to generate, but you know, they change the color. So now make we say for inside here, make we go down into our um, data object we work with. And this data object, we just use and they format the code where we want. Remember that. So inside here, make we say we want the BG for the size, right? And um, for the background. And then we can say whatever the, 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 the value of the user bg dot value, okay, now we won't work with, all right? So if you check the documentation, you can see, say, for inside the documentation of the QR code, you can see, say, it is taking string of the colors. So the colors here, it they give us FFF or 000. But for inside our own code, if we say make we exit, make we console log the value. So make I just come back into the code and make we just console log some value. So we just say, make we console log the data object even so. So I could just say, and if I console log this data object, make we go into the console, make we add some text, make we reduce the size to 200 and then make we make this code. So if we click up, you can see our data object, it'll give us the data as text, that are the text that we get for here before. It'll give us the size of 200, but it'll give us this hash. So whatever value we write for here, now it'll give us. So if we say, um, hey, and then we change the color, make a new one, it'll help us to make a new object, but it they add this hash for us. And now this is our API, you know, they accept the hash. So how do they come out this hash or format the string? What do you say? It will give us a string, but it's not going to give us the hash. All right. Now I'm waiting one fix. So we could come back into our project. We could go back into VS Code. And for inside our VS Code, we could say we want to change the value of the BG. And remind you, it will be the same thing as we do for the dots, right? So we could just do the same thing for the dots. And because we work with JavaScript, we can use, we get the dot splice method, where they help us to manipulate strings, okay? Now, it help us to clear the string from a particular side to a particular side. So we say slice, and this will help us slice off part of the string where we work with. So remember, say the string where they work with or JavaScript now index base. So it is start from zero, one, two. And if you remember that example where I just showed now, the code where we get before now um, hash FFF or something, right? Now this kind of code where they get that time. So we won't come on this hash. I remember saying now, in, now index base code where we work with. So we will get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So we don't want that. What do you want to say? We just want Come out the zero and say one, two, three, four, five, six. So what, waiting slice they help us to be say it go they help us the return waiting day after when we don't add the count. So we want to say instead of from zero, make it they start the count from zero, we want to start the count from one because we want to escape the hash. You understand now? What we'll come out that hash where we get there before? So we're gonna just press um, save for here and then make we try to see waiting we they get again for our value. And if we change the background, so make we change the background like red and we press this you can see say now our background don't give us the string all right it's going give us the string without the hash you know they get the hash again and then i'm waiting our api to expect so we deform this data before we send the data out so we could go back into the project and open up our vs code let me just duplicate this code again so we could say user dot now we define. find so all this object this data object with a pass up we can clean here we they pass this object into this fetch uh, request where we work with which are uh, our own asynchronous function where we work with and then we just they treat the function for here or they display this data for here which are this our display data where we work with right so make we say we want to um arrange our request so that it could help us they change the color of which we work with so remember say we get this object right so we want a object dot data object dot size here too if you just say we want objects this object dot dot, no worry, dot with the spelling. Now I'm going to help us today arrange that. I'm waiting to come from here 
these dots, I feel even change them to S for now, but I say S. So this object dot dots, okay? Now I'm going to use, so they change the dots color. If you change down to dots color, if you do anything where you want, all right? So we're not going to be confused, okay? Now, if you come here, we're going to say dots, dots, color. Once we do like that, make we change the BG color also. Now, once we're done like this, and we press save, make we test our code to see, say, everything they work the way we want to make it work, all right? I make we add our text. Make we say we want to change the size. So make we change the size to 200. I make we change the dots color to something where they red, black uh, text for here. And then we just click that. It could help us to generate a new code with a black background. Why the background not work? So make I see. Hmm. So if we look here, we could go back into our code. Oh, okay. I don't see the mistake. So I come on this F for here. All right, so I purposely leave all these things. Make sure that they see the way we they debug the code. Make sure that they see where code know they work. Uh, make sure they understand how to fix all these kind of codes. So uh, now just that F, we make that that tiny little thing. And I make my code uh, no work. I'm going to test them again. And of course, if I click here, we could see we get our um, um, background with this set. So ready, our code they work for us exactly as we hope make it work. Now. So because I did use this ES6, I could just like we say, I'm not gonna write this dot, this dot, that all the time. I could just like get look the code, know the values where I want, and then I could just work with the code. So make I just minimize all these other ones. And then make we just say instead of passing in the whole object as a day like that, make with the structure around. So we could just say data, one also passing the size. So we'll say comma size. And one passing the um, dots color. So we'll say dots color. And we're also passing the um, BG color. So we'll say BG color, okay? Now, once you don't like this, we get access to all these codes. So all these dots, OBJ, dot OBJ, dot OBJ, make we come out down. So we'll just select that, select Control D, where it is, they select every other um, text, where it be like that for here. I'm gonna just press Delete. It can't look well the way it's supposed. And of course, this one, we they use the structuring here to they bring out all the values we get. So this is a now a code day more readable or easier for your eyes to see. So we could test them again. So say we never break anything. So we could just say um like we generate our code and this is say now we get this our code and we can say we want another one working uh, another working code and we could just change the color to yellow for now and we could press uh I just say now we get our clean code and everything they work well. And of course, we get our little validation. We're going to let us know, say, we don't miss something for the code. So I hope, say, when I learn something for this video, I hope, say, when I enjoy this video, if you like this video, make sure I give this video a thumbs up. Make sure I recommend this video, giving our friends we want to learn how to code for pitching. If you add this project to your portfolio, but for now, that's all we need to learn. I will see you now for the next video. Thank you.